Okay, kids, welcome to another episode of the Repair A Thon. This is, it's got a bent corner here, but this is a Sun Stinger 60. It's pretty heavy, and the power cord has got some damage, and somebody chopped off the third leg of the grounding plug. If it ever had one to begin with, it, I think it did, it should have. So, anyway, let's plug it in and see if it explodes. I already know it's not going to explode, but... Okay, plug it in, turn it on, it goes thump. It's supposed to go thump, that's good. And we'll plug a guitar into it and turn it up a little bit. And I've got my guitar volume up all the way and it puts out a minuscule amount of sound. There's gain and mass. Okay. Good morning. Did that frighten you? That frightened me. It seems like the treble pot right here is the pain of our existence and we've got to really crust it out. We've got to really crust it out uh, input. So we got a lot of me buzz, which could very well be the fact that this thing is not earth grounded. Um, I wonder if the reverb works. That's fun. So whether you knock on it or not, I think there's a grounding problem. Oh good, the sound just went completely away. So now it has no sound again. That's nice. And it tried to work, you all heard it. And then I tried to turn up the reverb and then the sound went away. I think the pots are absolutely hideously filthy. We have a little bit of bentness here. Um, whatever, I think we should take it apart and see what we got. It wants to work, I can tell. Okay, so I'm not a zillion percent sure on where I want to start with this. Um, I had to disconnect the speaker wire. All this stuff plugs down, but they routed the power cord down through the speaker chamber. So it's just everything you want to do is a nightmare with this wiring. But uh, beyond that, I think, I think the pots are just really whacked. I don't think this is that old. Um, I mean, it's older, but it would probably be like late 80s, early 90s. These are fairly recognizable younger capacitors, and they don't look like they're trying to die. Um, the buzzing and humming, I think, was more so the um, fact that this speaker jack here is mighty loose, so it probably wasn't achieving a good ground, or the input jack was loose and it wasn't achieving a good ground. I'm pretty sure that's where most of our buzz and our lack of signal is coming from. So I'm going to start by spraying the pots out and just tightening everything, and then we'll see where we're at, um, and we'll see if the reverb works and if we actually have something useful. But uh, this might be a pretty simple one. Well, this amp is being awfully tricky. When it works, it works. But um, you'll turn it off and back on again, and then it won't work. And then you'll kind of start poking around. Obviously, this is all, you know, low voltage. I'm not going to blow myself up, but use a wood stick, people. Don't, don't do what big, dumb, dead Kobe does here. Um, but I get to poking around in this circuit, and sometimes I'll like poke at the input jack or something just right, and it'll like jump start, and then the thing will work, and then it'll just go back and stop working. So I don't know if my signal is magically finding its way to ground, or if there's a broken solder trace under here that I can't see. So I think we're just going to have to keep investigating further. Okay, so <clears throat> I changed the input jack because the old one was knackered. That didn't 
entirely solve the problem, but the guitar sure fits in there a lot better now. Um, so that was good. And then I seem to be... I just went through and I kept fiddling around with it, and I really think there was something stuck in the gain pot. So we had to do an extra round of the electronics lubricant and the contact cleaner, and now it seems to want to work. I can click it on, and it goes poof, and I can turn up the master and the gain, and I get sound. Oh no, I don't. I don't now. Great. So it just stopped again. That's great. I love intermittent problems. And we were doing so well. Hmm. I suppose we're going to have to pull the preamp board and see if we've got anything busted on there. Ay, 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 ay. Okay, kids, I think I found it. I did need to pull the board. That sucks because some of these wires are so thin, like for these reverbs. But uh, I started checking the pots, like around the gain and the master and all those, and they were all fine. Then I come to this base pot, I can actually just pull it out. It desoldered itself. So it didn't desolder itself, it just cracked and fell out. So as part of the tone stack, I'm sure that uh, all of the noise has to flow through it. So there's your problem. Um, so I'll solder that down, and I'll just, I'll just go down the row of pots here, and then we'll... Uh, test again but it uh, looks like I replaced the input jack maybe in vain but the old one really wasn't holding the guitar tight so I don't feel bad these are only a couple of bucks I think we have some additional soldering issues here or some kind of connectivity issues I've got it turned up loud enough here that we have some hiss coming out of our speaker I'm sure you can hear that and I'm just going to take my finger and now it goes silent. So we got something going on around here. Ugh. This amp really does not like me. Oops. Okay, Houston, I have reflowed a lot of the junk on the preamp board. And I was frustrated because it still cut out. And then when it cut out, I'd smack it and it would come back on. So I started thinking, well, maybe it's not the preamp board because I just kept knocking up there and it wasn't getting me anywhere so then I came back here and it wiggled I don't know if you can hear that noise but it's it's kicking on and off back here when I wiggle this thing so I think we got a crap connection on the power board I think we got to reflow a few things over here so that's at least progress I feel like I figured something out this amp is turning into be a real challenge Okay, so resoldering the I did the big resistors, the big power resistors, and the in the power transistors on the back, and that seems to have solved the cutting out problem. So I was deceived. I was tapping on the face, and it would cut out when the problem was actually at the back. But there were broken things in the face too. There were just a lot of broken things. Um, this thing's probably been handled pretty rough, but um, at this point, I think it's okay to put it back together. Okay, so maybe I've had it too easy lately, but uh, anyway, here's our Sun Stinger 60 fixed. I'm fairly certain. I've got the master at half. I've got the reverb turned down. Um, I've got the controls in the middle. Turn that on. It goes click. Grab the guitar. see what we got. Not a damn thing. That's great. Oh, well, we do. It's just not coming out of the speaker good. Well, that's because the master was down. What am I talking about? Now I punch it and put some signal into it and it cuts out. Do I have we have an iffy ground on the input jack now? Really? Really? Oh, good grief.
Okay, I believe while I was uh, busy putting this back in the cabinet, I uh, managed to put the speaker mute on and mute our output. Managed to turn that on, I'm fairly certain. Because it's being good now, but this amp has been a royal pain in the butt. It's quite loud. And the reverb. master here and turn up our gain. That actually has a pretty cool distortion tone for a solid state amp. That's pretty cool. dramatic either. proper send-off. If you know anything about Sun Amps is their history goes back to the Kingsmen, that 60s band. Uh, they were founded by the bass player because he needed a loud amp for his bass and they didn't make one so he made one, founded Sun Amps. So uh, yeah, as a tribute to the Kingsmen, I guess we'll play this off with the song everybody's garage band knows and we'll play it short enough that we probably won't hit a copyright strike. <laughs> There you go. So, Sun Stinger 60. It's really trying to sting me and make me look like a doofus. Um, in the end, it got a new power cord because the other one was really rank. We had to clean all the controls nine times, resolder the power transistors, resolder pots. This thing has been beat up, kicked around, and its wife ran off with a karate teacher. But you know, I suppose it's probably because it meets the two requirements that one would want in a touring amp or a road amp. It's loud enough and it sounds pretty good. distortion tone, that is one of the nicer sounding solid states I have worked with. Insurance tag is fun. This was tested by a guy named uh, Ronald Hogue. That was the electronic tester. So, Mr. Hogue, I'm sure you probably did a good job, but whoever bought this thing beat it up. Like, really beat it up. Like, really, really beat it up. And I'm going to have to try to beat it up a little bit more and see if any of these problems come back. But I, I like it when it's working. Okay, so next up on our fun fest is uh, Pig Nose 3060. Um, it's missing the back panel and some doofus broke the third prong off of there, so lucky us. Um, inputs 1 and 2, line out, effects loop, master, treble, mid, bass, volume, EB. Plug it in and see if it blows up. Okay, so it turns on, it buzzes, it 
makes crackle noises. It's a pig nose. It's built to last, according to the one of the mid-range pop makes a lot of noise. That sounds like it's like not grounded good. Let's see if it wants to make any sound. It does want to make sound, but it's making a lot of noise. sound, isn't it? At least it wants to make some. That input jack feels a lot better. That's the kind of the, I think that's the low gain. But maybe, I mean, I dime this and I don't get it. hardly anything. So this is like the really low gain input, I guess. Allegedly, and that should be the higher gain input. Let's see. That sounds pretty good. I think that volume switch is mighty, mighty filthy. I think this one might actually be straightforward. Let's give this one a whirl. Pretty neat construction on this thing. Got our two big caps back here, and our big old power transistors are actually on the bottom of this board, so it's all one board. And then they have this L shaped heat sink on there to keep them cool. There they are. Pretty interesting. A circuit breaker instead of a fuse. That's kind of cool. But uh, I think we're going to have to change this power cord. But let's see if just cleaning the controls with our Max Pro stuff. We have Max Pro Contact Cleaner, and we followed up with Max Pro Electronics Lubricant. You can buy that in my reverb store. Please do. It's good stuff. Let's see where that got us. Okay, so I got a total adventure here on my hands. The cleaning of the pots and switches and things did solve the noise on the pots and switches. The amp wanted to work, but the input jacks were janky. So I had the choice to either try to tighten them back up, because these, you know, connectors get sprung, especially if somebody trips on them, or replace them. So I either try to retension them or replace them, but to get them out, because they're soldered to the face of this board, you have to pull this board back. To pull this board back, you have to desolder the power transistors. So, I mean, in for a nickel, in for a hundred dollars, feels like, but uh, I want to do it right. <sighs> okay, so here's our pig nose. Um, yeah, I'm not excited, but it's fixed. Um, we had to tighten up the input jacks, which is a nightmare to disable all of that. I had to clean all of the controls and replace the power cord which again because everything is so tight in there is a royal pain in the butt all because some dingus broke the, th the third prong off the power cord now the other option of course would be just to cut the end off the cord and put one of those you know plastic replacement power cord ends on there and that's very plausible and for a home user I suggest you do that um, however, for me, that would be another trip to the store, and it just looks better if you put a good power cord on it. So, there you go. Let's play a few chords and call it a night. It's late, and this amp didn't make me very happy, and the sun amp stressed me out. So, um, anyway, for this part of the repair-a-thon, even if you found it boring or you found me unsufferable, please thumbs up anyway because darn it, I stayed through this and I persevered. So, turn up our gain a little bit. So the the 
uh, tone stack on this is very dynamic. Turn the master way down and turn the gain up and see how this has a cool distortion like the sun did. We're keeping it quiet, it's very late. I think that's a usable amp and you know it's kind of funny when you get these amps that are you know I guess you would say B-lister amps you know this is not your vintage Fender vintage Marshall that everybody goes bonkers over but they're very usable amps and it makes more sense to get them running from what I understand Okay, so it's the next day of our repair thon and I am tired because between the sun and that pig nose it killed my inner child. Okay, so this is a Dean Markley K300B bass amplifier. Um, it's got a bass boost switch, a compressor switch, volume treble, middle, mid shift bass, and an equalizer that you can turn on and off. Okay. If it works, we'll get a base, but it's probably here because it doesn't work. Okay, so we turn it on and it goes thump. That's already promising. Input number one. Turn the volume up. And Good morning. Okay, so input jack number one is crap. Input jack number two. is also crap. So the input jacks are crap. That's uh, probably the first thing we have to deal with and this being a closed back bass cab the front speaker grill has to probably come off and you gotta drop the speaker to unplug the wires and pull the cabinet out. Lucky me. Electric screwdriver to the rescue. Okay, so lucky me. First of all, had I been a little smarter, I would not have thought I had to remove the speaker. You can just plug it in on the back. It does unplug, so that's at least convenient. Um, yeah, it's got a headphone jack and a line in and line out on the back. Um, if we look down here, this has the same crappy surface mount switchcraft style jacks that the pig nose did which sucks. I don't see that the joints are cracked on them, but these are the ones that, you know, they get sprung and then you have to tighten them back up just like we did on the pig nose and to get to all the controls here to really clean them, we're going to have to take this board out. So I'm going to have some unscrewing to do over here and uh, you know, get this front board out. Well, that was fun. That was not a lot of fun. He, but it, we got it. Um, so now we can access our controls to clean them. And we're going to like physically wipe this down because this is like funky greasy. I don't know what somebody did with that. Maybe they shot WD-40 in it. And then it's got these um, switchcraft jacks, you know, which I would want to bend them back to the snug position. And on the pig nose I had to desolder them. But there's actually a hole here in the back and I think I can slip a tool in the hole there and work that locking prong back to the middle where it belongs. It's weird, both the low input and the high input, even though these are supposed to be switching jacks, they look like they're stereo jacks, which is just weird. Huh, whatever.
insert cleaner, turn it a lot of times. The way these pots are mounted, it's possible that um, these solder joints on the back might be a little janked. So if that's the case, we'll deal with it. Okay, I think I've actually got the input jacks sprung back a little bit because this is a typical wimpy PC board we're gonna reflow the solder joints so heat them up add just a tiny bit of solder more so for the heat transfer than for the actual solder bond and after we do the input jacks we'll do the pots too just for safekeeping because I don't want to have to pull this board back out again that's what makes me unhappy is when you have to redo all the stuff you just did okay so we've cleaned all of the pots we have cleaned and adjusted and tweaked the input jacks and I have just put the front panel on just well enough that we can turn it on and it's got a ground to the chassis and all of that fun happy stuff. So let me plug into input one and let's see if we have noise. I turn up the volume. I think we do. I think it was just that I was earth grounded. Okay. That seems pretty good. I can make the noise and I can wiggle the plug and it's not going out. Let's try input jack number two. Yeah. That's the lower gain jack. Seems to be working. Okay. Treble. Yep, middle. It's working. Mid shift. Let's try that. Man, some of these still have, some of these still have crud in them. And also because I don't have the nuts on the front, they have a habit of picking up some extra noise. It's so weird. It almost sounds like it has a reverb, doesn't it? That's so weird. I can tell that that's working. The more I work it, the more it shuts up. I put enough cleaner in it. And the base one works, okay. That's good. And of course, I'm my fingers are providing a ground to this. You know, so. Ooh, that switch is filthy. Gotta get after that. Okay, that switch seems quieter now, now that it's got some contact cleaner. So let's turn on this graphic EQ and see if this does anything. That should be like the basiest of the base. Yeah, I can tell that's working. That's a real low base. That's another... I can, I can tell these are working. Yeah, they're working, and that's not super dramatic because I'm not putting bass tones into them. I'm just listening to noise from my finger on the power cable here. That one's definitely fine. Okay, so if you're using... If you're using this, does this go away? Does this go do anything? No. These still work anyway. So the graphic thing is just in addition to the other thing. So they work together or they don't. And then there's a snap switch here for a bass boost. 
That works, and one for a compressor. Yeah, it's working. It's that one's real subtle, but it works. I can, I can hear it. I don't know if you can hear it. Doesn't matter. At this point, once we tighten the rest of this stuff down on the faceplate, I think we're going to be in okay shape. We'll probably crank the knobs a couple more dozen times just to really make sure that they're nice and loose. Our cleaners, you know, give our cleaner an extra chance to do even more of a job. But yeah, this one was straightforward. Thank heavens. Okay, so it's a base amp, I think. K300B and it's got a 15 inch speaker and it so it sounds like a bass amp to me. It's interesting because it seems like it really sort of almost more accentuates the mid and treble frequencies but if we switch on the bass boost now it sounds like a bass amp have this whole entire front panel like sitting in a slot and four screws. Uh, that's a design flaw in my opinion. Let's see if our graphic equalizer works. Let's just bring more bass because it's a bass and it has to have more bass. And uh, oh yeah, now what's so stupid is when you start to really really push the bass end of it, now it sounds like a bass amp to me. See if I can tighten up the cabinet a little bit and quell the rattle. But uh, our volume knobs, these are, these are all quiet, they work. That works. That works. That works. And our compressor does work. It gives it a little bit fatter sound and some more sustain. This will conclude this portion of the repair-a-thon and there's more things to do so we'll see you soon.